What's up, guys? This is Black coming at you. It's been a while since I've posted a record. Uh, this is going to be a kind of a remake of a video I've done before, but I have deleted and wanted to add some stuff to it anyway to update my most recent thoughts and opinions on things. Uh, the video is going to be about you know getting started in Tiberian Sun the things that you need and the settings you need to set up in, in order to experience the game at its you know maximum capability which uh, if you enjoy this game I, I highly recommend following these steps making these investments in order to put yourself in a position to where you can play at the highest level because there's uh, absolutely differences in what you are capable of as a player based on what equipment that you have in this game, what your settings are, etc. So I'm going to get started by making some suggestions for people that may not have equipment currently. So if you need to buy like if you're playing on a laptop, for example, you do not have the equipment to play this game at the highest level. There, no matter what laptop you have, if you have a, a, a three thousand dollar Alienware laptop, you can't play this game at the highest level on that laptop. You can play well. You can, can you you can. I don't know. You you can be part of games. You can get stuff done. I did it for a long time. I had a laptop for a year and a half when I first discovered CNCNet and I played. You know, I was involved. I was playing, but the difference in my gameplay the day I got a desktop computer and a regular monitor, regular keyboard and mouse, my ability to play this game and compete at high levels went up 25% overnight. It's a dramatic the difference that it makes to be able to take advantage of every possible option and like a resolution, etc. So, let's get started here. I've got a list of So first things first, computer. In order to run this game, you need something that can first of all run your operating system. And um, obviously the game on top of it. I think that the um, generation two Intel either i3, i5, or i7 is as low as you should go. And th those uh, processors are actually pretty decent processors. Uh, you, you can go pretty far with those before you're starting to experience bottlenecks with the processor, including you know AAA games. If you, if you put a dedicated graphics card in these computers, you'll be able to play any game on the market on low to medium settings depending on the game. So the the um the generation two Intels are they're decent. But they are five, six, seven years old now. So Gen two is where you wanna start your search at and from then from there on, nothing else is very important in particular. Um, you do not need a dedicated graphics card for Tiberian Sun. The integrated graphics will be fine for the purposes of just playing the game. If you're trying to record or stream, you do need better stuff. But just for the purposes of playing the game at its highest resolution and maximum settings, you do not need a graphics card. The integrated will be just fine. Uh, as far as RAM goes, 
these computers are going to have DDR3, which is one generation behind what's currently available. Four gigabytes is more than enough. That's all you need. A lot of these might have options to upgrade it to eight. Depending on your budget, you may or may not want to do that, but four is all you need. As far as a hard drive goes, it's, uh, again, depending on your budget, depending on what all you might want to use it for, a 50 gigabyte hard drive would be just fine for putting the operating system on, and then the game is like 50 megabytes, so you don't need much. Whatever the minimum option, the cheapest that you can find, is just fine. That being said, if if you have the budget, by all means, get yourself a, a nice solid state drive. If um, yeah, as far as operating system goes, um, don't go beneath Windows 7. I, in my personal opinion, Windows 7 is superior for CNCNet. But uh, disclaimer that superiority could all be in my head because my current setup is Windows 10 and it runs just fine but I do have one of these that I y use sometimes Windows 7 is installed on it and for some reason that I can't uh, particularly explain I feel like Windows 7 operates it better, just a little bit smoother, just a little bit less issues. And I can't even really describe to you what those issues are. Perhaps my um, ability to be precise, for whatever reason, Windows 7 seems to, it makes me feel better. But I can't uh, quantify that for you, so get whatever one you like better shouldn't there should be no real performance benefits on either one um, I would recommend getting a, a tower not just uh, avoid the mini unless you literally are buying it for Tiberian Sun and nothing else and nothing else matters to you uh, the reason for that is these uh, small form factors, you'll, they're very limited in the upgrade. Um, these, the motherboards in these things are really specifically designed for these cases, kinda. They're older technology, like if you buy any modern case, even the cheapest one you can find, the, uh, the connectors are gonna be a little off. I've tried to put these things in, in better cases and I ran into some issues. But if you get the uh, the larger form factors, the towers, Let's see if we can find a good one here. You know, something like that. This one in particular is a, a very good one. In fact, this one's perfect. On, on this one, you'll be able to throw a graphics card in here uh, and whatever else you want. So I, I recommend getting one of these if you're gonna try and buy one. Uh, yeah, what, what these are is, uh, you know, the office or uh, corporate computers. They, you know, companies will buy like a thousand of these and put them in their buildings and run all their computer, all their um, clients off of them, all their point of sale machines, etc. Like a, a JC Penney's might buy a hundred of these and use them for their registers, for example. Um, so they're very, they're they're designed to be very sturdy. They're designed to last, and I've never had a bad experience with one. The uh, the refurbished ones, they they usually go back to the whatever the seller or the manufacturer they get cleaned out they get uh, you know an inspection to make everything sure everything's working properly you know, I, I've never gotten one of these things opened it up and it hasn't been spotless inside of the computer I've never had an issue just 
plugging it in, pressing the power button, everything pops on, absolutely no problem. So you, you can feel pretty safe in these things. Uh, I would recommend finding a seller that seems like he's sold more than one of them, or at least has a lot of feedback and a, a lot of sales history. Uh, this guy looks like he would be pretty trustworthy. He's got 98% positive feedback, but 16,000 plus sales. So there's there's a good chance that he's not going to want to ruin his reputation. Um, so, like I said, 4 gigabytes of RAM, great. Sometimes you'll find sellers that'll have a a shitload of these things and they'll have options like you'll be able to change the hard drive size, the RAM amount, uh, even the processor, they'll have like three, five, and sevens. Um, and maybe even the operating system. So like I said, Windows 7, Windows 10, great. Four gigabytes all you need, 250 gigabyte hard drive, no problem. It's all you need for Tiberian Sun. Um, and hard drive is fine. Solid state drive is ideal. It is going to be more expensive though. So pick one up. You'll be able to run Tiberian Sun absolutely no issues. Fire it up. Run your updates for uh, Windows. Install the game. You're good to go. Uh, Anyway, moving on. So as far as monitors go, I recommend between 24 and 27 inch monitors. Uh, the reason for that is that is as big as you can go on a monitor without going, if, if you go too big, if you go higher than 27 inches, you're going to lose your tunnel vision. Yeah, you're going to have to move your eyes, you're going to have to move your head around in order to see to one end of the screen to the other. And you don't want that because that screws up your focus, it screws up your concentration. So do not go above 27 inches. And if you go below 24 inches, you're starting to run into a problem where if you're playing at the maximum resolution, which is non-negotiable, you must play this game at the maximum resolution if you want to be competitive and not be leaving skill and awareness on the table. You have you must play at max resolution, otherwise you are at a distinct disadvantage versus somebody that is. It does, it's not to say it can't be done if you're playing somebody that is uh, you know, lesser skilled than you, but if you were playing you on maximum resolution and, uh, and the other version of you was playing on a lesser resolution, the person on the, mac the higher resolution is going to win because it is a substantial advantage. Um, this particular monitor, I've had this this exact monitor before. It's an excellent monitor for this game. It's not a gaming monitor, but uh, Tiberian Sun was created in like the late 90s, before modern gaming technology existed. This will maximize the capabilities of that game, and then some. So th this is all you need. You don't need something fancy. Um, this particular brand has um, different sizes. It has a 24 and a half inch model that's a little bit less expensive. Um, it probably even goes less than that. But um, definitely, I, I think the the 24 inch one's like 130 or 140 dollars. Th this is a, a quality, sturdy, no BS monitor. It's definitely worth the price. Um, if you're on a budget, that's this is the this is the one to get. Um, if you have more money to spend, this is the monitor that I have. Um, this is, in my opinion, the best gaming monitor that you can buy. 
there may be some shit out there that costs like three thousand dollars that's better who knows but that's absurd uh, I don't I think that the it would be an infinitesimal fraction of one percent advantage to have anything superior to this if it even exists this is a 240 Hertz refresh rate monitor 24.5 inches this monitor will dis it'll um, I any game out there any AAA game any e game eSport game like um, th this only really comes into play when it comes to like first person shooters like counter strike where you need to make sure that you're your mouse is pointing at whatever the screen is actually on the screen at the moment. Like um, Tiberian Sun is not advanced enough to even be to utilize that feature. But if you play other games than Tiberian Sun and you got the money, this is the one. It's expensive. It's almost six hundred dollars, but it's the perfect size. It's it supports pretty much any resolution, you know. F 4K is not real, in my opinion. It's just we're not there yet. And 240 hertz is the shit. So if you got the funds, pick up one of these. You won't be disappointed, especially if you play modern games that have been that come out in the last 10 years or so. Alright, um, I'm going to post a link to this in case you do buy one of the Optiplexes. This guy's got a video on how you can, for $250, and that is including the price of the, uh, the computer itself, he'll show you how to make a, a computer that is capable of running basically any game at low or medium settings. Uh, basically he's just gonna give you a link to a, a graphics card and, and some RAM to throw in there. So, good stuff if you want to get one of those and uh, soup it up a little bit so it can stream at a uh, higher resolution and frame rate or uh, record or play games like Fortnite and whatever else is popular these days check it out. I'll post a link in the description. Uh, as, far, as far as mouse and keyboard goes, you don't need anything fancy in this game. There's some fancy stuff you can get. Uh, I'll show you what I have after this, but I feel like the advantage that I have having a better keyboard and mouse than this shit right here is maybe like 1% not very, not, not nothing uh, worth the investment. I just, I'm just an asshole. So I bought the best stuff I could find. Um, so th the one thing that you do want to take advantage of is the wire. Do not get a, uh, a wireless mouse or keyboard because they are not as consistent. They do not uh, gear, I mean, the, you want the guarantee that your clicks and your strokes are going to be acknowledged when you're playing a game like Tiberian Sun or you know any competitive game, and you you cannot afford to uh, target something and have it not acknowledge because you need to be able to count on your actions taking the effect that you want them to have. I can't tell you how many times back when I was playing on my laptop that I would um, you know, click on something, try to target it, then move away to go do something else, then go back and while I'm expecting my units to be attacking that target, they're just walking around playing touch butt, getting killed by the enemy defenses without having ever targeted that structure or unit. So get wired and don't cheap out too much. Um, you know this is pretty low price. Uh, usually I don't recommend going under twenty dollars. 
like um, this is a good mouse right here high quality mouse not gonna go wrong with it don't go under twenty dollars because I have bought mouses under twenty dollars before and they just you know they felt cheap they um, they didn't acknowledge clicks I, I'd have to you know I'd have to redo stuff redo actions constantly uh, even just scrolling around I feel like the scroll would skip and it was really frustrating so don't go too cheap you know twenty to thirty dollars is fine but if you have the the funds um, where is it? this is the one right here this is the best mouse that money can buy this is the one that I use Final Mouse Ultralight Air 58 Ninja. Uh, it's hard to really describe. It's the the feel, the weight, the ergonomic of these mouses, the phenomenal reliability of you know your your clicks and your just the acknowledgement of your movements and actions. Outstanding. If you have the money pick up one of these you will not be disappointed you're gonna have the best money can buy let's get rid of these get rid of that keyboard um, this in my opinion is the best gaming keyboard that you can buy uh, it is pricey it's hundred and sixty dollars but the the feel of these keys, the travel between keys, the uh, the backlight for the keys, and the exclusion of unnecessary shit is what you want. And as an add-on, these yeah, it's a mouse pad. Get yourself a good mouse pad. These um, keycaps. I don't. Know, in my opinion, and I've I've only seen a few people use these, but I love them. These things are awesome. They uh, keep your fingers in place. Uh, your, the confidence that you are have, and the, this, the coloration changes to avoid having to look down at your keyboard and find shit. These things are awesome. Um, what you do, you get a whole set, but what you do is just use the ones that are your hotkeys. So for me, that would be Control and Alt, and then Q, W, E, R, T, and uh, H, and then C and V are the ones that I use. Um, if you have the funds, I, I highly recommend these. The, the confidence that you'll have, the, the grip is much better than a standard keyboard. Is it worth $62? No. If you have $62 to throw away, yes. Get it. Excellent, excellent investments for somebody who likes to game and wants every advantage they can get. So anyway, um, those are the peripherals and the equipment that you need besides the internet itself. Uh, as far as the internet goes, you need an internet connection that is at, at least good enough to stream Netflix and YouTube without having to buffer or skip. If you can do that, which I mean, almost any modern internet connection can, then you should be able to connect to you know CNC net and play with other players without any issues if you have issues it's probably because you have other processes that are taking up at your internet connection on your computer system so um, I can't really diagnose that and, uh, until I actually you know talk to an individual so we can go through all the issues that you might be having but the the best advice I can get you, give you if you're not getting a brand new computer is to um, I mean if, if you don't have stuff in your computer that you 
can, if you, if, unless you have stuff to lose and you don't know how to back it up, I mean, I always recommend do a, a system restore if your internet connection sucks because, or your internet connection doesn't suck, but it seems like it does because there's a good chance that you have viruses and spyware and, or even just uh, you know telemetry being taken off your computer and sold to companies that you might not know about running as background processes and if that's the case your connection is gonna it's gonna suffer and it's particularly gonna suffer when you're trying to connect to other people and play an online game so if you can run a system restore at the very least um, hit your control alt delete or do a search for task manager head over here to startup and disable all the shit that comes up in your startup um, you know for me for example this particular uh, app here when it's on um, it cuts my frame rates in the game in half. I have no idea why. I don't even really know what this does. It uh, came when I installed this uh, gaming app. That's you know, uh, I, it's uh, this is my motherboard. The motherboard on the computer that I have um, recommends that I I need this app in order to control the the lights and the processors um, settings, etc. So. Sometimes stuff that's even legit can cause problems. So I recommend disabling everything, making sure that your computer has as few processes as possible running in the background. Um, some of that stuff might not matter for more modern games that are were, were developed on Windows 10, but Tiberian Sun is old technology developed on old technology developed on old shitty game engines so you know even if you have a phenomenal computer you might find that you're going to run into some problems with literally any form of multitasking <clears throat> but if you, uh, if you disable all these startups and reboot there's a good chance that's going to fix your issue uh, another thing that you can do to, to test yourself is to actually get on the game. Type in uh, forward slash CPU. And if you have nothing running, like you have no processes here except for uh, CNC net, this should be, even if you have an old processor like one of those Gen 2 Intels, it should only be like one percent. Uh, the reason it's seventeen percent for me here is because I got all this stuff going. I got Discord open, I got um, multiple tabs on Firefox, I got the recorder going, I got the, this Window Explorer going. All this stuff adds up. I mean all of this should be closed. When you're ready to play, um, having Discord open is fine, having even OBS is fine to a certain extent depending on what kind of com how good how good your computer is. You can trust uh, programs like OBS to not be, you know, fuckery, no fuckery in the background. Um, but if, if you have only CNC net and you're over 2% in your CPU speed, you got a problem. And it's there's a, there's a possibility that that problem is going to be screwing up your internet connection and it's going to give you issues when you try to connect other players. So, sort it out. If you can't figure it out, you're welcome to find me in the game. I'll run you through some diagnoses to the extent that I'm capable of. Uh, alternatively, you can find this uh, punk ass right here, Xme. That is one of the main dudes for CNC net there's a good chance that he'll be able to help you find out whatever your problem is but whatever your problem is do a system restore run your updates and then you know don't go on the internet 
for anything other than trusted software and normal sites and you should be fine moving on let's get rid of all this shit once you get uh, CNC net installed and run all of your updates uh, the first thing you want to do is go to the settings up here in the top left um, the CNC net settings nothing really to do here uh, all these sounds are going to be on on a fresh install I recommend turning them off because they can get quite annoying the only one I keep on is private messages and the reason for that is, is if you're in a a game channel waiting for uh, an appropriate amount of players and you leave your computer somebody is likely to send you a private message letting you know that the game is ready and that will give you a notification to come back to your computer and get ready to play everything else is just a bunch of chimes and bells and whistles don't need any of it uh, everything else here it's not really that important, just leave it as it is. In Tiberian Sun, this is where you choose your resolution. Uh, again, the maximum resolution here, 1920 by 1080, is the only resolution. If you're using anything else, you are at a disadvantage. Uh, if you are playing on a laptop, for fuck's sakes, there's a good chance that 1366 by 768 is going to be the only resolution that you can use is uh, but uh, the, these uh, square resolutions are the old school resolutions uh, you know just don't use them said so 1920 1080 is your only option if you want to play competitively if you want to have every advantage don't entertain anything else. It's the best. Get used to it. As far as rendering goes, for Windows 10, I believe that automatic is 99.9% you know, .9 of the time going to be your best option. If there's a 0.1% option that is not, I've never encountered or heard of it. So try automatic first. If that doesn't work, try default. That's the second most common one to work. Um, on the laptop that I used to have, granted that this was prior to the update that added automatic rendering, so that this may not be the case anymore, but I used to have to use DD Wrapper. But if I ever had to go back to playing on that laptop again, I would just simply not. I'd rather quit than ever have to use any settings other than the ones that I'm showing you right now. So um, I've never experienced any situation where these two gave you a better experience. So you know, start out at automatic. If um, if it's not working for you, default. If those aren't working for you, you probably have an issue. Uh, I think default might be better than w for Windows 7 but again last time I tried that was before automatic came out so automatic might be better than for that as well so regardless of your setup start out with that um, full screen go full screen fuck windowed mode so um, on default when you first uh, do a fresh install. I believe this is what your settings will look like. Uh, I don't know why this is even a setting. It doesn't make any sense. To the, What drag distance does is when you're in game, uh, you can select a group of units by making a little drag box like that. And the drag distance just uh, makes it stop right along there. Like Even if you have the button still clicked, it'll just uh, disengage the box after like whatever four means as far as distance and so max that out so you can make a, a bigger box and a, you can just make whatever size selection you want uh, I mean why they don't just make that the highest possible setting and then remove that altogether I have no idea I can't think of any possible scenarios where drag distance being less gives you an advantage or 
even any capability. Um, so yeah, make sure to max that out. And uh, add this click here to disable Alt Tab, Windows Key, and Control Escape. That will help prevent you from accidentally kicking yourself out of the game back to Windows. Um, if you do that, you know, first of all, obviously it could happen at a critical time during an attack or in the middle of a defense, or at the very least, it'll slow you down. Or worst case scenario, it could prevent you from getting back into the game altogether. I will also include a link to help you configure your operating system to make sure that you aren't getting notifications in the middle of a game. Like uh, sometimes, if you have uh, like if you get like a message of any kind or like a an update, it'll it'll give you a little pop up, a little message box will show up, and if you accidentally click on it then it'll take you out of the game and go back to Windows. So I'll, I'll show you a video that'll walk you through um, making your settings and your operating system ideal for full screen gaming. And it's like 10 minutes long, but it's, it's uh, worth your time for sure. Alright, uh, moving on, let's go to sound. So as far as sound goes, I recommend music to zero. Even if you like the music, if you want to play competitively, music needs to be off. And that really includes personal music, like outside. Like a lot of people like to play with, uh, like some. I've noticed a lot of people play with this really, like, shit techno music in the background. Um, I get it, I like music too, but music is a distraction and you cannot afford a distraction when playing this game at a high level. So, I mean, in order to be the best you can be, the music needs to be zero. As far as the voice volumes, you need to be able to hear it and make out what the voices are telling you, but, I mean, that's it's kind of a personal preference. I think 10% uh, is great. Um, higher than that, what's the point in it being louder? I can I can hear it at 10 percent but the, the reason you need to be able to hear your voices which is also another reason to keep music down is to make sure you don't miss these uh, warnings this is when you have a radar you will get uh, like warnings from either Eva or Cabal letting you know that like uh, for example your harvesters are under attack or one of your structures is under attack or that you have a, a unit or building that's completed its construction. So getting those warnings is very helpful. And as far as sound volume goes, I wouldn't call sound um, critically important, but it does give you the ability to deduce that things are happening or coming your way earlier than you would, even if your opponent's not scouted. It's not as important as it is in games like Counter-Strike, for example, where you can you need surround sound to be able to to hear what direction gunfire or footsteps are coming from. But um, you know, for example, you can hover over where you know the enemy base is, and you'll still be able to hear the sound effects over that base. So, like if they lift a carry-all or bomber or any air unit or a subterranean APC or um, devil tongue. If they go underground, they make a certain sound, and you can hear that even if they aren't scouted. So if you are hovering over somebody's unscouted base and hear a carry-all, uh, you, can, you can deduce that they probably have a disruptor or a mammoth MK2 to go along with it, and you can start preparing for that to be coming your way or warn your partner that it may be coming their way. So that, that is an important advantage um, if you want to play at your highest capability you need every advantage you can get so these are the settings I use 20 10 and 0 they work just fine for me so let's, uh, let's get in the game here because there's some options in game that are only accessible in the game itself 
So I recommend this when you're logging in initially before you start joining other players, uh, other games that are up, like so, like all these. Just create your own game and go in a game just by yourself because this is going to tell you if you're having any any connection or hardware issues that are causing lag because if you're in a game by yourself you should experience consistent uninterrupted perfect speed which you can tell by uh, going to this info panel down here and I'll show you how to get access to that in a minute uh, my f FPS is 60 which is the the maximum FPS for multiplayer games uh, multi multiplayer game uh, you can uh, if you're by yourself you can break that frame rate by going the fastest and for me that should be around like 200 something so yeah now I got if anybody has higher frame rates post them I don't challenge my frame rate but anyway go back to um, faster and that'll cap, get, take you to the 60 cap, which is uh, where CNC Net plays in multiplayer. Uh, which, by the way, is a little bit faster than uh, X Swiss and WOL servers. Probably like five ish frames per second faster. So, if all of you have experienced the older servers, you will notice that gameplay here is slightly faster. Um, so APM is action per minute, it's not that important, and you can uh, toggle through it and get some uh, information down here, like uh, how, how much hit points are left on a building or target, and various information. And on this screen, you'll be able to see everybody's loss percentage and their ping, and all the player names will show up here. But uh, you can see that mine's sitting on a steady 60 frames per second. Uh, if it if you're getting any other result if it, if you are not on a steady 60 frames per second here you got a problem you're something's wrong and if you start playing with other players you're going to experience lag and the more players in the game and the longer the game goes on it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse so i mean anytime you're in a game where it's slow or below um, like fluctuating between like around 55 to 60 is normal there's really nothing anyone's ever going to be able to do to fix that but uh, if it's if it's less than that somebody is failing one of the steps discussed in this video so let's uh, move on to the end game options here so go here to the top left of the screen and uh, hit the game controls uh, the first thing you might notice is I believe the scroll rate um, defaults. I'm not sure where it defaults. I think it's probably here, slower. I recommend changing it to faster. Uh, if you go to fastest, it's a little bit too much for me. It's uh, you'll just like one tiny flick of the mouse will send you almost all the way to the other side of the map. It's uh, doable. I'm sure there's some people that use that setting. I think faster is a little bit easier to control. You're still let's uh, let's do some scouting here on the maximum frame rate. Waiting order. Loud and clear. Just so we can yes, see Loud and clear. more than a black Waiting screen. Order. Loud and clear. Infantry reporting Loud clear. Awaiting order. Loud and clear. Infantry reporting. Moving out. So yeah, so you can see how fast I can get back and forth here, and this is applying to when you hold down the right click button on the mouse. If you hold that down, you can scroll through the map much quicker than just doing this. But uh, I think fastest is good. I mean, you can get over here almost instantly, hit home key to get back. I mean, you, you can you can work pretty quick with that. Whereas, I feel like if you go to the fastest option, it, it's harder to stop in a specific place. It's just, I'm sure you could get used to it. There's probably people that use that. 
I'm, I'm more comfortable right here. Uh, I couldn't even fucking tell you where the uh, visual details differences are between low, medium, and high. Um, and it's, it's definitely not going to be anything special. And as far as performance goes, there's no way it matters if you can run this game on any one of these at 60 frames per second. Then you can do all of them. Alright, so let's uh, check out the deck section here. Game controls, and we'll go to keyboard. Um, you know, tool tips will give you a brief description of everything if you hold the mouse over it. I use target lines. I don't see any reason not to, all the, except for a little bit of screen clutter, but I prefer them. Scroll coasting, I don't even know what that does. Sidebar text, just more helpful info. Uh, so let's go to keyboard and start setting up our hotkeys. So in order to set up a hotkey, you uh, choose a command and press uh, whatever character you want to assign it to. You have to click assign in order for it to acknowledge it. Um, a lot of these have defaults already set up, like for example guard is set to G by default, so you'll have to actually change it if you want it to be anything different. And there are a few that you can see in here, for example, the the Q move. Um, that's you can't uh, alter that in the settings and to the the hotkey settings for whatever reason. Um, you know, there's a couple keys in here that um, I don't even know how people figured it out because it uh, it doesn't show up in the options didn't show up in the the guides when the game originally came out and you can't edit it so be careful not to um, fuck with your Q key for example otherwise I don't know how you get it back without reinstalling the game but uh, that being said Q is one of the most important keys in the game because you use it not only to set rally points like that to make your uh, units go to specific places in a certain order, but it's also used for certain units to move while firing, which is um, a, a critical element in unit control in this game. So Q is probably the most important key in the game, and you need to center all of your hotkeys around that specific key. In order to um, reduce movements and, re and reduce thought to make all of your actions as instinctual as possible, you want to avoid having to lift your hand off of your keyboard. So, you know, where I, how I rest my hand is my thumb's going to be on the Alt key, my uh, pinky fingers over Q. My ring fingers over W, my middle is over E, and index is over R. That's how I rest my hand on my keyboard. Um, you know, I'm not telling you you have to do it this way, but I, I feel like this is the the best way. But uh, feel free to do whatever's comfortable for you. Uh, so, so what I do to set that up is go to interface here. Um, you know, the reason Alt is important is because it's there's a, a, a way to select units and make groups with the Alt key and select them. So anyway, interface, Q, obviously Q is for the, the Q move, but uh, W, E, and R I set as uh, repair, cell, and power mode. So go down here and find uh, cell. I keep that set to R. Repair mode, I set that to E, and power mode, I set the W. And what that does is allow you to use these functions, the repair, cell, and power, without having to click on them 
it just uh, brings it up automatically so you don't have to click sell and then go sell you can just hit your hotkey and sell without having the you know the, that drag action that's time time you can't uh, afford to spend doing it especially under duress I mean when you're under attack you want to be able to do everything as instantaneously as possible uh, the, the act of uh, deselecting your defense going over here get your sell key now you can't control any of your defense until you're ready to sell I mean just be, being able to get all your clicks in get a, target your everything and then just sell real quick that's a uh, absolute invaluable defensive advantage you know same thing with repair and the power on and off isn't that important um, particularly later in the game but uh, as your skill advances you'll be able to utilize that in your early game in order to prevent yourself from going low power which um, decreases your building speed by 50 percent while you're teching up and getting your early rushes out that'll prevent you being able to do that will you know, maximize your build speed, prevent you from having to build power turbines or additional power plants, and every second counts when making an early rush, you know, because the time it takes you to make this turbine, place it, and then start your next building, that one second could mean the difference between your disruptor landing in their base and then having a Titan get out of the war factory or not. So, like I said, once again, every second counts utilize these hotkeys, get used to it, make it a habit. So the next one, an interface once again, is your place building and repeat building key. I use C and V. Uh, I like that because all I have to do is you know move my index finger down from the R down to the C and the V. Uh, it's very easy, very comfortable move. Don't have to look at the keyboard. You can literally just you know, go down over the F, then hit the C. Uh, I never hit the wrong button on that one. Never any issues. Perfectly comfortable. Um, G, I leave as guard. And then there's the H key, I leave as H. Both of them are easily accessible with your index finger. And those are default um, hotkeys, so you don't have to screw with those at all. Down here, you'll see the uh, key for the toggle info panel. I use that as a the number pad three, which I have as a um, I have a separate unit that that's literally just a number pad. But uh, that's something you want out of the way. You don't want to hit that by accident. Uh, same thing for grant control, which is under control. Grant control, I set that as number pad one. Uh, another one that you just want out of the way for. If you're ever using those, you're probably in a situation where you don't need quick movements anyway, and you don't want to hit those by accident. Uh, grant control allows your allies to use your units. So if you want to send them defense to help them out, they can use those uh, units without you having to pay attention to them. So those are the most important hotkeys that you need to set. Um, get in the game and practice. If you if you're an older player, you're going to be used to coming over to the menu and dragging your buildings over, like so. No matter how comfortable and familiar that is with you, it's slow yes, sir. You got compared it. to using a hotkey. And if you're trying to build as fast as possible, having your screen in this position, waiting for your buildings, and the, the time it takes you to drag this refinery and then place it, versus having it be ready, going ahead and putting your mouse where you want to place it, hitting your hotkey and then placing it. That, uh, e even that drag time adds up. 
when it, when it comes to building your power plant, your barracks, your refinery, your war factory, your radar, your pad, your tech center, your service pad, all those drags add up to what what if it's you know three seconds? Three seconds is enough time to get units out. So that's every second that goes by is more defense your opponent can have for when your disruptors Infantry are landing. So every single advantage you can take to get less time, you have to take that advantage. So the way to practice it and get used to it, just make a game like this, make some silos. Do this for like a minute and your habit should be set. Alright, let's get out of here. Alta 4. I don't have a lot more I can think of at the moment to add. Uh, we'll make additional videos if I figure out anything else that's important for a new player. Just make sure I covered all my bases. Yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to add to this video. So, follow these steps and you should be able to, you know, enter games and play with people, play with other players, and you will not be the reason that there is lag at least and you'll have every advantage uh, real quick I'll show you what it looks like to be playing under one of these shitty resolutions um, 1024 768 is one of the old uh, square monitor resolutions I don't even know if it'll run I don't even know if it'll launch we'll see what happens but you'll uh, see what a massive problem it is to Sorry. play it like this. See how much less of the screen you can Please see. You have fewer build options visible, which will force you to have to scroll through the menu to find stuff. Your awareness is severely handicapped. The only, uh, the only advantage is, you know, you got bigger grid units, so it's a little bit easier to target stuff and not uh, misclick. Yes, but it, I feel like that advantage is nowhere near as valuable as the advantage you get by being able to see such a large portion of the map at any given time. Being able to access more of your build options without having to scroll, etc. And if you have a big enough monitor, you're not going to be hurt by having a slightly smaller MCV. Let's get the fuck out of here. And if I never see that resolution again, I'll die happy. Alright, um, questions, comments in the comment section? Till next time.